Welcome to the lesson on mixers. You've produced or sampled some content and you're ready for your first performance. And you may be just comfortable plugging straight into the projector, but what happens if your computer crashes? You've got a nice blue screen of death, everyone notices and is looking at you and they stop dancing. How embarrassing. What you need to do is have more than one source in case something goes wrong and if your computer crashes, you just crossfade and move on to another source like a DVD or another computer or anything else that is actually outputting on, on the screen. So then if something goes wrong, you're crossfading, the audience does, hasn't noticed and the performance carries on as normal. So depending on the content you're using, then you may want to um, shop for a different mixer. You can have mixers that are audio only, video only. You've got mixers that combine audio and video together in one box. And you've got also high definition mixers. So what we've got here, we've got the Eduro V4, Eduro V8, Eduro V440, the Newmark AVM 02, and the Pioneer SVM 1000. The first mixer we're going to look at is the V4. V4 is the uh, lightest and the smallest of the um, mixer we're going to look at today. And it's a very practical uh, option if you're traveling. Now, this is a video only mixer, but we have a V-Link connection in the back. It's a MIDI connection that hooks up to any DJ mixer that's MIDI enabled so the DJ mixer can act as a remote control for the V4. The v so if you hook it up that way, you can combine the DJ mixer and the video mixer for an audiovisual performance. Let me guide you through all the different features. The V4, as the name says, has four inputs. The inputs are a composite. You've got a bit higher quality inputs on the back of the unit. Which Once you connected your your inputs, you could select different inputs from the, the buttons at the front. You've got channel A and B, so it's a two-channel mixer. Let me guide you through the different features. First of all, the V4 is connected to these two DVJs. You can see a preview from what's coming out of this DVJ, and the DVJ on the right is on the preview on the right here. What's coming in the middle is the preview out on this uh, V4, which if I crossfade, you can see this is what I'm supposed to see on the projection. This source is connected to input one, and this source is connected to input two. I can preview each of the connection from clicking on the top buttons here or the output at the moment I've got the output selected. Going down along the unit I can select the inputs I want from the buttons here so one two three four correspond with the one two three four inputs. I've got effects that are specific to each channel so channel A and B I can crossfade between with the crossfader. When you buy the unit it comes with a T-bar but I've changed it to a more DJ friendly crossfader which allows a bit more of a live feel I find. But it's again up to your personality to decide. So one of the things I like to do with the V4 is play with the, uh, the black fade out. So if, I, if I've got sometimes um, I listen to the music and uh, there's a break then I, I would want to maybe just take a break from the visuals and, and just fade to black and then maybe do some, some effects separately on, on one source so I'm not always mixing between two sources I'm also mixing with the black so the, a nice little cool feature you want to learn about is uh, just a tap uh, BPM fun function 
So the tap BPM function, you tap on the on the rhythm, and it detects the BPM. That's a bit slow. Let's let's make it a little bit faster. Okay. Okay, 126 is good. And now you hit the BPM sync. So what's going to happen is it will crossfade at at the rhythm that you've got here, and you've got quite a natural um, phenomenon. You've got a, quite a natural uh, way to follow the, the rhythm of the music, the ambient music. And now you can just relax a little bit and then look through, for example, your DVD box, try to find the next sample. You know, so you're not always like completely focused on, on one thing. DJ does the same. DJ goes inside his record box when one track is uh, playing out and you need to do something in a similar way when you, you're doing visuals. The transformer button, what, what the transformer button does is it just cuts literally to the B channel on, on this, uh, on, in this case. So if I've got music going on that's... So if I've got music going on that's doing, for example, pop 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 I can just hit the transformer button and do pop 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 And again, I'm following the music in a very natural and hands-on way. There are different ways to crossfade with the V4. You can, you can mix, you can hit the mix button. The mix button is uh, cross-dissolve. It's another way to say cross-dissolve. And you've got all the wipes and more funky type of effects. These effects are, um, you need to be careful, they can get cheesy quite quickly, uh, so I tend to use them with moderation. So on the unit surface you can see written down some preset effects, but that applies only to the memory bank one. Uh, you've got a whole lot of other customizable um, effects uh, if you go into the menu. As soon as you, as soon as you select memory 2 all the way up to 8, you go into the menu uh, section, you can view from your, your preview out. So the preview out is how you access the menu. So you go up and down and highlight, let's highlight for example effect A. Let's just fade that out so I can see clearly. So what's happening on effect A? I, I click enter, I've got I've got four types of effects that relate to the uh, five buttons on the left side. So instead of having a multi um, mirror effect, let's uh, let's enter here and go up. I have a chroma key instead, so I'm gonna hide, I'm gonna change the strobe effect here to a chroma key. If you're traveling a lot, you may go to a country has a different uh, video format than the one in which you're based. That can be changed when you turn on the machine. As you saw a minute ago, it, w it said PAL. Let's, let's, let's see that again. I turn on the machine and it's set to PAL. If I, for example, go to Japan or America, they have an NTSC um, format, so I need to, I need to change my I need to change the V4 setting and it's a very easy way to do it. So you, before you power on the machine you just press input 1 and output together like this and then press on button and wait a minute till the Christmas light and here we go it says it's NTSC now and you had the display. Now let's go back to power again just power off the machine press input 1 and output together at the same time as I power on and now I've got the power and now I switch back to power so now we've got the uh, V8, we're working with the V8 which is a similar model to the V4, it's just slightly thicker and um, the layout is a little bit different to accommodate all the different features so there are more features here. What's changed is that we've got, instead of uh, four inputs, we've got eight inputs, and we can select each in of the eight inputs on 
the different channels. So what used to be a knob for the, uh, the fade out is now a slider. Uh, you can slide to fade to black or switch this little button and you fade to white. And the T-bar here, I can change that to, as well to a crossfader that way. I can change the crossfader uh, to the T-bar in a horizontal way. Um, but I can do, um, I can show you how to do that in a minute. And what I haven't shown you is the transformer buttons. Okay, just a final thing. What you will notice on the V8 is that uh, the, the connections are a little bit better quality. You've got full BNC connections and we've got the VGA connection and S video here in the in the in the bottom. So these are a little bit better quality um, than what you've got on the V4 and so you can expect also a uh, better quality that's going on the screens. Now so this is what we've got in the back of the uh, V8. We've got um, seven different inputs and uh, also an, an eighth input which uh, does the, um, the, PC, the PC input. So you can plug that into a VGA connection. You have to keep in mind that the, um, the input is digital but um, these are all the output options and we don't have a digital output yet. So we, we are going out in um, a standard definition analog signal. Okay, so we looked at the V4, we looked at the V8, and now we're looking at the V440. Now this is the first mixer that we can uh, mix HD with. Uh, just to um, start on this side, we've got something that can remind us from the V4. We've, we can have four inputs of standard definition video that we can mix together. Similar types of uh, transitions so you can apply. But on this side, now you've got high definition inputs. Can have uh, four HD inputs. Uh, now I've I've got um, for purpose of demonstration. I've got this laptop on top of uh, the other inputs I've already connected to the other mixers. I've added a laptop, and the laptop is uh, through the VGA connection here is outputting at the resolution around 1080i, and these two are can be mixed together. We can mix with this mixer, we can mix standard def with high def. So this is the advantage of um, this mixer. So with this unit, you get more of an impression that this is very uh, purpose-built for broadcast quality, broadcast purposes. And so um, you don't necessarily have more, so much of a hands-on uh, mixing feeling as with other mixers but you've got a lot of precisions on all the different buttons that you can, you can work with. Okay, so we still got the analog connections on this side. We can uh, still connect to a mixer, a DJ mixer or any other MIDI controller to uh, have this unit be controlled remotely. Uh, on, and on this side, all the HD elements that we can connect to via yeah, RGB or with the uh, VGA connections here. And that can output obviously uh, HD format, as I said, RGB, 720p or 1080i.